So let's say you're trying to open up schools in the middle of a pandemic, because we are trying that. Politicians at all levels are telling teachers to go back in the classroom, but what does that actually mean? If we have students and teachers in the same facility, is it possible to open schools safely? Uh... Here's the issue. American schools were already overcrowded. This is something we all keep in the back of our head, along with America's crumbling infrastructure and failing social safety net. I'm in Texas, so I'm going to use Texas as the example for this video. Let's crunch some numbers and see what happens when we start adding kids to classrooms. Since we kind of mostly know how COVID-19 transmits, we can assume that the six foot distance rule is optimal. This is the CDC recommendation, and this will be our starting point. So here's a kid, and here's a three foot radius circle around them. If every kid has a circle this big, we get six feet between students. The National Center for Education Statistics says that there is an average of 26.9 students per classroom in Texas for grades 7 through 12. We'll round up to 27. This is slightly above the national average of 26.8. So, for 27 kids in their circles, how much space do we need? Let's do some math. Pi r squared, math, 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 math. We find out that each kid needs about 28.3 square feet. So for just 27 students, a class needs to have at least 763 square feet of space. Texas laws say that classrooms at the secondary level shall have a minimum of 700 square square feet per room, or 28 square feet per student. This is already not going well. Kids aren't just in a blank void either. They have to be in a room. And these circles won't pack perfectly into a room, but let's see what we can get. If we do one row of 13 and one row of 14, that gives us a room. This room is going to have some empty space, and now we need a room of 1,008 square feet, which is about 37 square feet per student. Let's try a different arrangement. Three rows of seven, and one row of six. Well, this gives us a room that's still 1,008 square feet. In fact, even if we try to maximally pack them in there, in whatever weird configuration, it'll still keep us right around a thousand square feet. Okay, but how big is that? What is a thousand square feet? For about 1.1 million dollars, you can have an apartment that large on East 69th Street and Lexington in Manhattan. It's basically the size of a standard two-bedroom apartment, a fourth of a basketball court, or the space of about 11 Honda Civics. Okay, but students aren't just points. They sit at desks, usually, and a desk takes up about five square feet, so we're adding at least 135 square feet to the room, getting us to about 1,100 square feet. But a class isn't just students and desks. We have cabinets, and a teacher, and their desk, and probably some computers, and some space to walk on the edges, and making sure the teacher is six feet away as well. Texas law says we need to have a minimum of 700 square feet, but there's no way we can get all of the students in there. So we've heard, okay, most people won't want to come to school in the middle of a pandemic. Some are going to stay home. Giving each kid an appropriate amount of space, how many kids can we actually have in this average classroom? Let's get rid of the furniture. Let's get get rid of the teacher's desk, let's make the teacher stand in one spot. What's a reasonable number of secondary students to have in a room of about 700 square feet? Including desk space, we have room for about 17 students. We can spread students out to more areas, but some schools are already using every nook, cranny, and weird understairs office to teach. And some cases, like special education rooms, are going to have a lower number of students by their design, and they can't necessarily be divided with everyone else. If your school has 40 classrooms with 27 kids apiece, you'll have a school of 1,080 students. If we have to have 17 kids in a room, we'll need extra space for about 400 kids. At best, we'll be working at two-thirds capacity. While some schools might get to that number, places with families who are Black, Indigenous, and people of color, or Latinx, tend to have jobs that can't be done from home. That means the lower socioeconomically a school is, the more likely a larger number of students will have to be at school. And we're really pushing it at that two-thirds number. But you don't just have students. You have teachers, many of which who are in their 60s, others staff, substitutes, many of which who are retired teachers, and everyone else that works to make a school run. The good news. There has been some limited research that suggests kids might not transmit coronavirus to adults as effectively as adults spread it to other adults. Unfortunately, that research is still extremely limited, so the CDC standard remains. Younger children also seem to not be as affected by COVID-19 as adults. Look, normal isn't going to be possible. At best, we'll have schools that look more like clean rooms than classrooms, and at worst, we'll be putting teachers and students in a situation that could compromise their short-term and long-term health. We know what we should do, but at most schools, it won't be possible. We have to ask ourselves, is it worth sending teachers and students back when we know we can't protect them as well as we should? Thanks for watching, and stay safe.